So, yeah, let's um, let's see if I've got Sonic Mania installed. I hope it is. Hope I don't have to download it. K L M N P. Yeah, there it is, and it's installed too. Awesome. So if you fancy sticking around, we're going to jump into Sonic Mania, and then hopefully there's a there's a way of me splitting this into two different highlights. And let's see whether I can change the stream. Still waiting for Klonoa. Did you pre-order it for day one as well? That's annoying if it hasn't turned up yet. I haven't played Sonic Mania in a while. I love this game. Um, is it a bit loud? I might turn it down a bit because it sounds a bit louder than Sonic Origins was. Oh, just so I can watch it in the museum. That's cool. Right, let's turn that down a bit. And bear with me just a second. I'm going to see whether I can change the name of the stream to say Sonic Mania instead. change the category as well, just so it's correct. Update. Right, I think that worked. Uh, anyone who's watching, can you see whether that says Sonic Mania now? Oh yeah, I should change the title of it on the page as well. That might look weird with me adjusting this in real time. There we go, that's close enough. Cool. Can you see the words Sonic Mania on the stream as well now? Oh no, I was playing them in Sonic Origins. That's that's the reason that I wanted to start streaming in the first place. They didn't do a physical version of the release in the US, so you ordered a copy on Play Asia. Oh yeah, when I was streaming it the other day, someone told me it didn't get a release in America. That's so weird. I wonder why. Right, let's start a new game in Sonic Mania. Excellent, and that works straight away as well. Cool, so... For everyone who's still sticking around, let's get started with Sonic Mania. And it's kind of weird seeing how different the sprite is already. It's so much, um, there's so many more animation frames. Yeah, when I, when I, um, when I took my Lenoa like, screen stream the other day, people were really, really surprised to see that I had a physical version. I don't know what, um, Namco? I don't know what Namco was thinking, not releasing it in Namco. I'm sure it still has plenty of fans. Wow, it's weird playing Sonic Mania. Look at, look at those animation frames, that's crazy. Everything's so much more expressive, like, even when he just looks up. And the flowers as well, moving and dancing. The new, the new graphics for the menu, for the ring boxes and things. Wow. I forgot how nice this game looks. And the way Sonic rotates when he's going up the ramps too. Uh, I got the DLC for Sonic Mania, but I wasn't really that interested in it. There's, I think I'm just playing it through a normal mode now. There was an encore mode, I think, which changes up some of the characters as you're going through the levels, but I always prefer just playing Sonic games as Sonic. I don't know why. Like, I'm, I'm not even interested in playing the originals as Tails or Knuckles either, so... I, did, I never really cared when there was, like, a big thing about... Wow, you can find your players Knuckles in the Sonic 1 and stuff, like... I've never wanted to play as Knuckles, so I don't care. Just let me play as Sonic and just run around and do whatever I want. Oh yeah, there's no Super Playlight. That's interesting. But yeah, wow, this... The animation. I forgot how nice it was. So smooth. I'm looking forward to playing through some of the new stages as well. I haven't played them in a while. I am trying to do his... Um, yeah, it is called Sonic. 
You have a point. Oh yeah, that's something different from this version as well. The giant birds. I'm so impatient with bosses. But yeah, you can put the rings up, whatever. Just keep blasting him. I mean, Sonic Mania is kind of like listening to a really great mixtape. Loads of classics and moderns as well. Yeah, that's true. I love the fact that Zone 2 has some new elements as well. Like, Zone 2 of Green Hill has this, like, zip wire things. And Zone 2 of Chemical Plant has that, uh, like, bouncy liquid that's all over the floor. There's just some really interesting things that they added to the original zones to make them feel fresh, I guess. To make them feel fresh and exciting to play again. For people who are sick to death of seeing Chemical Plant in Green Hill for the millionth time. Oh, let's see whether I can get down there and show you the new special page. Can't remember what this one's called. Oh yeah, it's Blue Spears again, of course. It looks a little bit different though, compared to the one in Sonic 3. It's actually, um, it looks more like what you'd expect Blue Spheres to look like on like the 32X or something, with the extra colours. I'm not paying any attention to what direction I'm meant to be going, so... I'm guaranteed that I'm going to mess this up somehow. Okay, right there. That's a really difficult um, special stage, considering it's in the first level. Right, where's the actual special stage? Can we get back to it? The special stages in this game are really cool. They kind of remind me of Sonic R, actually, in a good way. It's in there somewhere. I'm not going to try and get all the special stages. Uh, just because I don't think it's that exciting to watch. How do I get in there? Maybe it's something to do with that spring. No, that's taking me back again. Maybe I'll just ignore that one. Oh yeah, classic Green Hill, put a spring in the way. Yeah, I'm not going to bother doing all the special stages. I basically did them in Sonic and Knuckles by accident. Because when I, when I was playing through Sonic Origins, my rule was that I wouldn't retry. Really so, even though it gives you the option to play the special stages again if you want to. I wasn't going to bore people by replaying the same section over and over again. I can do that in my own time. But yeah, anyone in the chat who played Sonic Mania when it came out? What did you think of it at the time? Do you think it was a good follow-up to the Mega Drive games? Were you happy to see a return to proper 2D Sonic? Were you glad that Sega actually let fans create the game and actually trusted them to make it? Yeah, there's one. Let's go! Yeah, Sonic Mania is fantastic. It really is. And these special stages look amazing as well. Look how cool this looks. And basically, what you have to do is... Just like the other special stages, collect the rings to keep going. And then you pick up the blue balls, or blue orbs, or whatever you want to call them. And if you pick up a certain amount, you'll get faster and faster. And then the idea is that you chase after the emerald, which has been carried by that machine there. And it's kind of slippery to control, but I actually think it works really well. It's, it's more responsive than Sonic R, anyway. And they're just really fun, and the layouts for the different race tracks later on get really cool too. There we go. So we're on Mach 3 now, which is the highest speed. So all you basically have to do now is make sure that you keep enough rings to be able to chase it down in time. And there you go, that's the special stage in Sonic Mania. Probably my favourite in the whole series, if I'm honest. Just really love what they did with it. Love the graphics as well. That 32-bit style Sonic just looks amazing. And this is kind of... 
Another really easy version of the end boss from Sonic 2. And yeah, it's easier with this water shield, of course, because you can just bounce up. So, wow, yeah, it took him out super fast. I didn't realise how convenient that bouncy shield would be on this level. So there we go, that was Mania's take on the Green Hill Zone. I'm sure you'll agree they did a brilliant job of dating it. Yeah, they really love using the end of Sonic 2 for some reason. Hey, Super Bunchy Man, thank you for the follow. Thanks for stopping by. 110 followers now, that's crazy. And now, straight into Sonic 2 with Chemical Plan. And with a really cool remix as well. And then you'll see in... Oh, that, that spring there actually just reminded me that I actually tried to learn how to speedrun this level. Actually, I wonder if I can show you. Uh, maybe not, I don't want to... I don't want to restart in case it breaks anything. But I kind of replayed this level over and over and over again to learn the optimal route for it. As, uh, one of my friends on Twitter, I think, was doing a competition uh, to see who could get through the level the fastest. And I spent like an entire day like, perfecting my route through the stage. I, I, would, I would never have gone into the water. So I'm doing really badly this time. Get me to a thousand. Maybe. It's happened on YouTube, it can happen on Twitch. Well, I'm nearly on 20,000 on YouTube, which is just insane. I never thought I would ever get anywhere close to that. But yeah, my dream is still to get a gold play button for YouTube for 100,000. We'll get there one day. I'm confident it will, it's just a matter of time. I don't think Twitch gives you anything, does it? If you reach a milestone like that. They don't actually send you anything like YouTube does. Ah! Oh no, that was bad. I'm gonna drown now. Wow. I'm usually really good at this section. <laughs> yeah, give me the play button first, I care more about that. But yeah, no, I don't want to force anyone to do anything. I'm happy working my way up. Yeah. That's part of the fun, isn't it? Trying to build a community. Trying to understand what people like about what you're making as well is something that's taken them years to figure out. But I do enjoy the process. That's, that's what matters. Yeah. Maybe one day in the future. Maybe I could do content creation full time. I would really love to. But I, I don't see it happening for a long time. But then I'm always surprised at the amount of people that I know that do do it full time as their careers. So, goes to show it is possible. Uh, don't care about waiting for the boss. I love how careless I am with the bosses in Sonic. Just wail on them. <laughs> so this stage is actually really different compared to the original. So you basically inject the floor, and depending on what colour the floor is, that um, decides how far it's going to bounce you, which is really interesting. Although there is one part of this level where I keep getting lost in, so we'll see whether I can avoid that this time. Or not. We'll see. If I remember where it is. This bit reminds me of Wacky Workbench from Sonic CD, which I do not want to be reminded of because I hate that level so much. But yeah, this level is a lot more tolerable than that one at least. God, I hate that stage so much. 
wacky workbench is just a mess. If you were watching my Sonic CD stream, you know, just the insane frustration I was having with that one. This is how they should have done it, like turned it into more of a puzzle. So you have to be careful with that blue bubbly floor, because that one will hurt you. That's why that kind of there. And almost drops you next to that Eggman box, which of course is um, dangerous. So I think the bit where I get lost in, I've gone past it because of the direction I decided to take it. Really enjoying the stream, just like doing all that stuff. That's cool. Have fun with your work stuff. Hopefully it's not too boring. But yeah, thanks for the support. Hopefully this is some nice background background content for you. These special stages are so much harder in Mania. Right. Right, proving my point. At least they don't matter, because they're not the ones that you get the events from. For some reason they just wanted to include both versions of the special stage. Not sure what that does. It turned my rings blue for some reason. Anyone know what that does? It might be something to do with the big rings that appear. I think when you, when you pick them up, it counts as ten. Ten rings in one. I like that this level is a mix of fast moving areas and then slower puzzle sections. Oh, there was some better stuff I could have put in there, I think. That looks like it should have been a, a time travel spike in Sonic CD. Oh no! Yeah, that's that's what it does. It turns them into giant rings. Oh, like tails, why couldn't you have done that? Like got a new job, so you're improving your contract to do an Oh, that's cool. I just started a new job as well. I started three days ago. And yeah, my, my first day was just going through all the e and CBTs. So I feel your pain. You'll get through them. Hope it works out well for you. I think I was guilty of having YouTube on in the background as well, so I understand. Except, um, my YouTube recommendations are all messed up, because I've been looking at new cameras, so all I'm getting now is uh, new camera reviews and stuff, rather than actual gaming videos. Ah, uh, this is the bit I keep getting stuff now. Started a new job yesterday. Oh, awesome, everyone's starting new jobs. Brilliant. Well, I wish you all the best of luck. This is where I don't know what to do. Yeah, I found the same spot again, but um, I'm trapped. I think I managed to free myself, but I might be going backwards. Weird level design there. Yeah, congrats everyone on your new jobs. Hey, we found another special stage. Man, these special stages are so cool. Every time I go into it, I just get so excited by just seeing these amazing graphics. And they even included the weird, like, pop art fish from Sonic 1. <laughs> A nice callback. I have no idea why they had a screen full of weird floating fish in Sonic 1. I do feel like that first special stage was just like a tech demo that they just kept up with. They just kept it in the game because they thought it was cool. Rather than something that was intentionally designed for Sonic. It just feels so out of place, I think. Okay, so now what we need to do is try and track down the Emerald. Ah, he's taking a shortcut. It's a bit difficult when you're jumping in the air because um, you do a bit of a, a skid. And yeah, you can see how these levels get more challenging. Because the, the way they're laid out. Right, we got this. He's getting closer. I'm just going to focus on catching up with him rather than trying to collect anything. Yay, there we go. 
going to pass on the new Sonic game. Which one do you mean? Do you mean Sonic Frontiers? I don't get it, just because I'm a big Sonic fan. But I'm still not sure what I feel about an open world Sonic game. Honestly, this seems very weird. They're calling it Open Zone, not Open World. Which apparently means that it's going to be split up into different open sections. Which sounds interesting, but I wish they would have shown that off in the trailers. Because people still don't really have an idea of what to expect for that game. Oh yes, this boss fight! Ah, oh, I was so excited when I saw this fight as well. How cool is this? Just dropping Poyo Poyo in the middle of nowhere. I love Poyo Poyo as well, so I was so, like, just, what a cool thing to include. And you can see there how you make a chain as well by putting one colour on top of the other. So I'll do a three chain, get the yellow, red and blue, and that'll drop a load on Eggman's side. Of course, this is like, Mean Bean Machine's super easy mode, so you don't really have to make any combos to kill him. He'll pretty much kill himself if you just do really basic stuff. Yeah, what a cool reference to Mean Bean Machine. And they actually referenced Mean Bean Machine in the new movie as well, which was a really nice surprise. The Mean Bean Cafe. So, that was pretty fun. I need a purple one. There we go. There we go, he's dead. As the Sonic Mania team said if they're working on Mania sequel, they have been putting all their effort into Origins. Uh, I don't think there's any there's any news on a sequel. I wish there would be, because obviously there's loads of stages that they could have included that they didn't. And honestly, I would like to see them do an in entirely original game. I think that... Yeah, Christian Whitehead, Simon Tomley, the whole team would be so... Like... If they were just allowed to do whatever they wanted, like this, if the whole game was brand new levels, man, they could do some really cool stuff. I mean, they already have with some of their fan games, but if they were allowed to do an official Sonic game that was completely different, I think it would go down really well. I don't know why Sega was a bit scared to... I guess it's because it was unproven at the time, and that's why they made this one mostly a remake. Yeah, they've clearly got really good ideas. So if there was a way that they could put those ideas into making a full-blown sequel to Sonic Mania... Ah! I didn't know that was Bottomless Pit, though. Yeah, it would be really cool. So, fingers crossed. I know that Christian Whitehead started his own game company, and he's worked on, worked on a shoot -em up style game. I can't remember what it was called, but apparently it was just like some little project that didn't really have to worry about, you know, anyone's expectations or anything, which is cool. So I'm glad he got to work on something for himself as well outside of Sonic. But yeah, I hope that Sega will hire him again. Although I heard, um, with the way they were treated on Origins, maybe they won't want to work with him again. There was a lot of... Hey, that's just like the thing we saw in the last game. There's a special stage in there. Uh, I forgot what I was saying there. There we go. No, I forgot. I forgot what I was saying. Um, yeah, the way they were treated when they worked on Origins, basically, the versions of the games that they handed in, Sega messed up some of the code, apparently and they were quite upset with how the final game turned out. Like, it wasn't what they were expecting. They said that some of the bugs were theirs, and that Sega wouldn't allow them to fix it because of deadlines, which is understandable. But they asked for an extension, and they, um, they asked Sega if they could do patches and things, but they haven't heard anything back from them. And as well as that, Sega also tweaked the games to fit the Hedgehog engine, which is what's running all of the menus and all of the museum stuff in Sonic Origins. And by doing that, they introduced a load more bugs which weren't in the headcanon version. So it is quite disappointing to hear that, and I hope that Sega takes note and 
treats them a bit better in the future. Because I do feel sorry for them. But they put so much time and effort into it, and it sounded like they were under crunch as well, which is never good. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully there's a good resolution to that, and Sega doesn't just be stupid and ignore it. But you know what they're like. Anyway, this emerald is miles away. How do I get up to it? There's a little shortcut there, but it's not doing much. Ah, there's another one here. That'll help. And some extra rings. This is making me want to play Sonic R. Getting closer. Am I? Yeah, slightly closer. There he is. Get back here. Ah. I almost got him then if I didn't bounce off the wall. Ah, I hate how slidey it is though. It could be a little bit more... Yay, yeah, there we go. Oh, I was really focused then. Probably one of the easiest special phases, but definitely one of the most fun. And an extra life. Because this game actually has lives, unlike Origins. I love the idea for this level as well, being set on a film set. It's not really um, a level design that you see that often in anything, which is really cool. Uh, yeah, I think that was three now. I haven't been keeping K around. But they do get harder, but I should be able to do it. It's, it's more of a case of finding them that's the problem. Some of these levels are quite big. Yeah, I'm not going in there. I don't want to do this blue spheres levels again. Look at these graphics, they're so nice. The animation, the way the sprites rotate and stay within the limitations. So good. Oh no, I ran out of rings. Get some more rings before we place this boss again. Three, three. I'll try to take the end. These um, these bosses kind of remind me of Sonic Advance 2. The way that you have to run across the stages. Uh, is it just the blue one? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how far we can get then without any rings. Is there going to be some? Yay, there's some. Okay, I don't need to panic quite so much though. Damn it. This isn't a boss that I can just I can just cheese to death. In Sonic Advance 2, you can literally cheese him to death with with Cheese the Rabbit, because she she basically has an attack where you can just hammer the people and just kill anything in sight. F's in the chat for Sonic Boys. Club spin. I love this. This reminds me of the, um, the introduction stage to Dynamite Heading. If any of you have heard of that classic by Treasure from Mega Drive. I keep telling Sarah she should play Dynamite Heading because of how much she loves um, Mischief Makers. And it kind of has a similar vibe. Come with emitting lives from games. Yeah, it doesn't really bother me that much whether games have lives or not. Lives do feel a bit pointless. Especially in some games like Mario, where you can easily get like a hundred lives by the end of the game. Oh, I slowed right down then. Wait, have some more drink. Yeah, lives are kind of pointless. I like it. it Basically, the way I think about lives is, I like it in games that are built to be replayed from the start, a lot. So I think they make they make perfect sense in older games, because you were, you were expected to replay them a lot from the beginning. But for newer games where the lives only reset you back one level or back to the start of the area that you were in instead of a checkpoint, that's when they feel a bit pointless. 
so let me know whether you agree with that. Or not. That's how I think then. Like, I think they had their purpose at the time. I think lives were a really good idea. And they they definitely helped with the replay value of the games back in the day. Because you would be you'd be kind of forced to learn the game and get better at it. Whereas games these days you don't really need to learn. Because if you die, it's pretty easy just to restart from where you left off. And you don't really have to worry about any consequences of your actions. Which is actually one of the reasons why I don't get scared in horror games. Because there's no consequences. Like, oh no, he's gonna come and eat me. Oh, I'll go back like five minutes and have to try it again. If I had to go back to the start of the game, I might feel differently. But then again, I can see that modern gamers don't want the frustration of having to start a game from the beginning every time you die. Plus, it depends the kind of game, because older games obviously could be completed a lot faster than newer ones. You wouldn't want to lose like 20 hours of progress or something. Lives were a transition from arcade to console. I don't think lives were. I think I think scores were. Scores were always pointless, as far as I'm concerned. Like, have you ever looked at your score in a Mario game? Scores were an arcade thing. I think lives had their place, especially in more challenging games. But yeah, score, I never really understood why you need one. Like, there's a score here in this game. Have I looked at it once? No. Nope. And I don't think people will be challenging each other to try and get a high score either. In this sort of game, you'd be challenging each other to see who can finish the level fastest. But it makes sense for arcade style games where you're you know, having to kill a certain amount of things in a time limit to get a high score or something. But I guess scores make sense in some context. Like, in an extreme sports game, if you're having to get a score to pass a certain challenge or something. But in most games, they're completely useless. Yeah, you, you see my point. I'm not just talk, talking nonsense. Uh, Mario games reset your lives every time you enter back into the save profile. Yeah, that's true. I think it it resets you with quite a quite a lot though, doesn't it? And then in some Mario games, you can just speak to someone and they'll just hand lives out to you anyway. Egg TV. Let's see if I can cheese the egg TV boss. 280 degrees? I was at my room yesterday. Degrees. I don't know whether that's doing it in Fahrenheit or Celsius though. Oh, I don't get to see what that one is. That was a very easy fight. I don't even know what his attacks were. Yeah, I love that the older Resident Evil games limited you like that. That was cool. And then you'd be worried about, do I save now? Do I save it until later? And then if you die a bit further in, you're like, ah, oh, damn it. I'm going to go back like two hours when I use my last aim for them. I really like that. I can see why they got rid of it, though, because people these days would not agree to doing that. Yeah, and then we get another flying battery. We just saw this level. So now you can see the difference. Obviously, the first part of the stage is... Pretty much just a retelling of the original game. Like most of it. If you've played the original, you'd be able to play this one basically off by heart. Um, one of these will lower me down. But yeah, then the second part of the stage introduces a lot of new mechanics. Which is really cool. And obviously it's got a remix of the amazing song as well. Ah oh, no! I thought I'd be able to grab back on them. I don't really have a favourite favorite series title, I like all sorts of games which makes focusing on 100% in a particular kind of game difficult. Got to run, turned on notifications, definitely catching up stream. Thanks so much for stopping by, and thanks for joining in the chat as well, I really enjoyed talking to you. Right. See you next time. 
and as for the other comment there about 100% and things, I think I have certain series that I'll always try and do everything in. Like, yeah, Sonic. I want to play every Sonic game. Whether they're any good or not. Mario as well. And Kirby. I've got my childhood favourites, basically, that I always want to keep up with. Um, but apart from that, no, I don't really have any particular games that I want to try and 100%. I'm trying to think about what was the last game I've been able to complete it. Uh, I have no idea actually. I don't really focus on trophies or achievements or anything like that either, so I don't really feel the need to 100% games to get all of the bonuses, if that makes sense. I just play games until I've had my enjoyment from them. Although, these days, it's mostly just playing games to record videos for YouTube. So I'm hoping as well that Twitch gives me a bit of a reason to play games that I wouldn't play otherwise, too. Oh, well, I still want to keep my fire. I like the fire. Oh, I lost it. Okay, I'll go back and get the magnet. Sure. Oh yeah, I forgot that. It sticks you to the ceiling as well, of course. It's electrified. That's a cool one. I don't know why I thought that would bang something. It's not how that works. That's a cool visual as well. Sonic looks almost 3D there. The sprite's a lot bigger than it was on the Mega Drive. I can't remember how many levels there are in this game. And what time is it? It's quarter to ten. Oh, there was nothing up there anyway. I'll probably stream to 11 because I'll probably get up to work. We'll see how far we can get. I can always finish Sonic Mania next thing, so I don't get there in time. But yeah, hopefully everyone's enjoyed your weekend. Well, not weekend yet, is it? Nearly weekend. Hopefully everyone's enjoying your evening. Watch me play Sonic. Uh, I, can't, I can't read this, I'll read this at the end of the stage. <laughs> this level's all over the place, I'm just being thrown from one side of the stage to the other. Um, oh, maybe I can stay down there a little bit. Uh, that's why I'm trying to focus solely on the specific genre of puzzle. I'm trying to care less about 100% and so I can actually get through as many as I can. So, what puzzle games do you play in at the minute then, probably? Are they puzzle games that have like a certain set of levels for you to try and get through? I'm trying to think of some of my favourite puzzle games that have levels. You should definitely check out Peggle if you haven't played that already. I can't remember if you said you played that or not. I tried to play every Zelda. I've played and finished every Zelda game as well. And, uh, fed up of waiting for Breath of the Wild 2 at this point. I don't really 100% the Zelda games though, because getting all the heart pieces can be a real chore sometimes. They love this idea of a, like um, I don't even know what you'd call that, like a laser beam machine. But the idea here is just to, to wait long enough until you can actually get it. Every time the walls get smaller, your platform gets a bit higher up. So again, another really easy boss. Now we get to see what's different in Zone 2. 
Elden Ring. I got Elden Ring, but I've hardly played it. I didn't really have time. Basically, when we got it, we just finished moving house. And then, like, the week after, the TV had to be packed up, because we had builders in. And basically, we've hardly even used the TV downstairs since. It's still got a cover over it, because people keep coming in to do different things downstairs. So, when all that's set back up again, maybe I'll play it. I also got Returnal as well, and I was actually enjoying that more than Elden Ring. If I'm completely honest. Elden Ring, I feel like you need to dedicate a lot of time to, to be able to get anywhere in it. Which is good, but for someone who values their time and has a lot of projects they want to work on and stuff, it's not really the kind of game that I can, I can dedicate that long to. I'd like to though, because it does seem good. A nice alternative to Breath of the Wild, I think, yeah. It does kind of feel like a Zelda game in a way, like if Nintendo made a really mature looking Zelda game based on the original Zelda series, then it might be something like that, you I was getting worried then, I didn't know if there'd be uh, a bottomless pit there. Yay! Another pointless life! Where am I going? I'm going to get another pointless life in a second if I get one of the The tails just fall off the screen then. I don't know what happened to it. Can I get three more rings? There we go. Another point of sight. Okay, we have 70 hours of Elden Ring. Might end up being one of the best games I've ever played. Oh, wow, that is high praise. I haven't got that far in it at all, really. I played it for about an hour, maybe. And then the TV had to go away, so I didn't really have a chance to play it yet. I haven't really had a chance to play the new Kirby game yet either, which I was really excited about. I thought it was funny that those two games kind of came out at the same time as well. Like, complete polar opposites, but I was excited about getting both of them. Where am I supposed to go with this? Oh, there's a switch on the wall, I didn't see that. I think I just wasted that invincibility. I feel like putting the blue sphere stages inside those checkpoints is kind of a missed opportunity because I really don't want to go into them. They should have kept the same ones from Sonic 3 where you got the chance to get the extras. And then... Maybe have the Blue Sphere stages as a second special stage if they wanted to keep them, keep them in the game some, for some reason. Yeah, I've got to concentrate for a second because these get really difficult. And I'm worried about running out of rings. Ah, they're not rings. Okay, I, I just lost some of the game to punch. Must be nearly on the next speed level. Oh no. Okay, got it. Ah! Ah! Good job you can't fly off the end of the stage, it bounces you back in. Could have been very dangerous. Gaining on it. Oh no, my rings are about to run out. Oh god. That's close. Okay, there's a bunch. There's another bunch over there, okay. If I come back round again and if I need them, I know where to look. I think I've got them now. Man, my heart was racing for a second then. I was down to nine rings. Oh, that was close! Come on! Five rings left! Yes, just made it. Uh, Green Frog says, just wait for I can find that says puzzle. 
so that I can get through the Switch Online EA or free to play. On the whole. Cool. So you're looking for free puzzle games. You should check out um, Pokemon Puzzle League that came out on the N64 app. That's one of my favourites. I think it came out on there yesterday. I was happy to see that. That was a game I played a lot on the N64 back in the day. Actually, I'm going to be doing a N64 top games list and, and hidden, hidden gems episode soon. So, if you guys would be up for it, maybe next week, I could play some N64 games on screen using the original system. So that'd be cool. Because I know some people are kind of like, eh, N64 wasn't really that great. I've definitely got some favourites that I could argue argue the case that it is a great system for. It was a misunderstood system, like the Wii U. And obviously it was like Rare's pinnacle of games. They had such an incredible aim for I was so sad when um, when Microsoft called it at the start of the GameCube era. Man, I'm still sad thinking about it. You know, Shadow isn't on the N64. Maybe there's a ROM pack of Mario 64. Put Shadow on it. Saw so Moist Critical do an N64 tier list. Oh cool. Maybe I can capitalise on his video and get some extra viewers. Moist Critical can just do whatever he wants on YouTube and get millions of views. I wish I had that freedom. How did he get popular in the first place? I don't really know where he came from. It's just like, one day I just didn't stop hearing about him and then it's like everyone knows who he is. I was listening to some of his podcasts that he did with, with Dr. K. I um, can't remember what his actual channel is called. Healthy Gamer, I think. Yeah, he was having some interesting discussions with him. Oh yeah, this is a weird boss. You have to hit him into the spikes on the side of the stage. Oh yeah, I forgot you had to upgrade your subscription to, to, to get the N64 and games and stuff. I never really thought about it, I just got it the day it came out. I'd say it's worth upgrading though, there's, there's a load of great games on the service now. Like maybe at first it wasn't really worth it. There's definitely a lot of good stuff on there now. And um, there's a lot of great Mega Drive games on there too. Which is cool. I know they just put uh, Mega Man Wily Wars on there. Which is great to see because for a long time that game was almost impossible to play anyway. He's been making videos since 2007. So have I. I haven't got famous. Maybe it's just a waiting game. I think he did some collabs with bigger YouTubers as well. Like that. I like that fight, that's cool. Very unique. Oh, Pokemon Trose, yeah, that's a fun game. Pokemon Link here in the UK, it was called. Which makes a lot more sense. Now for another new stage, this one's called Press Garden. This is another fun one. Again, a very unique theme that I've never really seen anywhere else. I think when they were coming up with the ideas for these levels, they were like, what is the weirdest concept we can come up with that no one's ever made into a game? 
level before. Let's have one all about pressing grapes. Yeah, a network and wide variety. Plus, um, you know, he's just got a really good personality and that always helps. People basically listen to him talk about anything. I like his laid back style as well. He's not like a lot of YouTubers who try super hard. Figured out something. Figured out the secret. And I feel like the same for Ludwig as well. Like he suddenly came out of nowhere and now he's doing really well for himself. Maybe in a few years' time, someone will say that about me. <laughs> we'll see. Pokemon. Why is Rissi Chu saying Pokemon? I know you, you want to do a Pokemon. Um, what's it called? A few? Not a fusion challenge. What's the ROM hacks where everything's random? Randomizer. That'd be fun to do. We were trying to get the software so that we can both um, download the ROMs together and stream it at the same time. So that'll be fun to do one day. I think Heart Gold and Soul Silver. What's the one you were planning to play through? The man has a very eloquent way of describing goofy topics, yeah. Yeah, I think that's helped as well, because he talks about a lot of recent, like, topical things that people are interested in hearing his opinions about. You know, whether they're serious topics or not, it's still things that people want to hear. Oh, and obviously his his talks with Belle Delphine probably helped before she became irrelevant. What a weird level. I'm not really sure where I'm supposed to be heading, like what direction I'm meant to be heading. I have no idea, I'm going all over the place in this stage. Half the time I feel like I'm going backwards or just further down. But I presume I'm going the right way. I found a nice burst of speed there. And now we're going the other direction. And then we're going back again. And now we're upside down. Yeah, no idea what's going on. But it looks cool though. Am I going around in circles? I feel like I'm going around in circles. Is it one of those stages? Yeah, okay, I need it to stay on the top. What's going on here? I can't remember what to do here. Do I try and cheese him? Yeah, that's what we gotta do. That's what we're going to do, just, just don't care about your rings. Who has time for waiting for boxes to be destroyed? Not Sonic. Stretch! <sighs> A lot of bigger YouTubers, there's a certain level of cult of personality that helps them create their brand. Yeah, definitely. 
It probably takes a lot of effort, but yeah, they're extremely charismatic, and I think that helps a lot. And obviously, it's just more fun to watch someone who's genuinely... Not just entertaining, but genuinely, like, able to keep you engaged for a long time. Or over a long period of time, when you want to keep coming back just to hear what they have to say next. Which I'm still working on. But I know I've improved my present presenting skills a lot over the past few years on YouTube. If I go back and watch videos from even a few years ago, I just can't even look at them anymore. And yeah, hopefully I'll keep that up in a few years' time. I'll say the same about today. But it just comes with practice, I guess. This second stage, I have no idea what this has to do with the first one. Like, the first one was obviously like a factory and like a press machine. But this one, I don't really understand. It's just a base and like some Japanese gardens or something. I don't get the relevance. Like, it's a cool level. I thought that was a switch, it's actually just a screen. Frozen screen. There was nothing actually down there, it was a bit pointless. Whoa, I don't even know what I picked up then. The speed up and uh, invincibility. That's cool. And I'm frozen. I like his face there when you get frozen. Oh yeah, the idea is to smash through the blocks there. And then because you are ice, you can just slide around. Look at his face. <laughs> His eyes even change direction. Pun intended. Thank you. That's what I'm no, I think I've still got a long way to go. But I can see my flaws and I know where I need to try and improve. Yeah. I have no idea how to make a stream entertaining, so hopefully this is at least at least watchable for you. Like at least with videos I can plan them in advance and like, you know, write ideas of what I want to say and how I want to present it. Okay, so I'm enjoying it. Somehow I've had enough things to say to cover like, several hours each time. Oh, uh. Get him, Tails! Is this a fight I can't chase? I've got to wait for the spin there. Oh, I cheesed it. Yay, there we go. Dun, 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 dun. I don't really understand the story in this game. Just, the emeralds have some weird power that teleport you around different Sonic games. Can anyone make sense of that? Now we got a level from Sonic CD. A much nicer version of Stardust Speedway. It doesn't feel like it's just slapped together quite as much. It's a shame they used this version of the level and not the um, not the present. It's really cool music. 
I really like the default theme of the starter speed. I remember those these sections being really, really frustrating. And I got really annoyed at the pinball boss on Sonic CD as well. It took me ages to get up to the level that I was supposed to be at. Huh. Is that supposed to be like the time travel generator? Yeah, that's basically meant to be the time time stone thing. That you have to destroy in the past in Sonic CD. Ah, I don't know where I'm going again. I'm just being thrown around all over the place. Sonic, um, Sonic and Uphold was shorter than I remembered. I thought it would take me like three hours to get through that, but I've got through that and half of Sonic Mania in less time. I never understand which direction I'm going to go at the end of that section. It just hits you in a, in a weird way where it sends you both directions at once. Whoa! Didn't the Sonic Mania story also into Sonic Forces? Yeah, there was something that linked the two together, I think. And the games came out around the same time as well, so maybe Sega was trying to do something to tie them together. But, you know, I don't think the story in Sonic Forces made much sense either. That game was... Apparently the game was rushed, even though it took them like three years to make it. Because... I don't know whether this is true or whether this is just a rumour, but I heard that something went wrong within Sonic Team and they deleted a lot of progress that they've made with the game engine. And it actually meant that they spent most of the time going back to fix, fix the stuff that should have been in the engine in the first place that they somehow lost or deleted or corrupted or something. And that's why the game isn't really that polished. Or why it feels so slapped together even though it took like three years to release. So I don't really understand what happened there. But there's something really amazing. I love these enemies in Sonic CD. Mostly because of that ending video. Where he shows, them, where he shows Sonic fighting them. And he made it look so exciting. And then when you fight the actual enemies in the game, it's like looking like what they showed in the cartoon. Die like bug thing. I'm making these, all these bosses look super easy. There we go. Back. I keep forgetting you have that drop patch. It's a nice move. There's the time capsule. And now we get to go to the good version of the stage. Here we go. Yeah, this is what Stardust Speedway should look like. Bright lights everywhere and all the golden stage with the trumpets and things. It looks so cool. I love the spotlights in the background. Although it still doesn't use the version of the song that I like. But at least it looks right though. Probably my favourite background in, in Sonic. So sparkly. Oh, and now we lose it all for this, like, factory setting. In Sonic CD, that area drove me crazy trying to find enough speed to go into the, uh, into the past. Luckily, you don't have to do that in this game. They just kept those time things at the end as well as great. Oh, I should have held on to that. Whoops. Where am I going? 
just keep trying to go to the right and hope it's the right direction. I feel like I've missed a few special stages though. But some of these levels are so big, it's like impossible to find them unless you have a guide. Not as bad as Sonic Adventure 2 though. No, not Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Advance 2. To get to the special stages in that game is just insanely difficult. There's basically like five special rings that you have to find on each level. But to get the special stage, you have to actually finish the level after having collected all five of them. And the way the levels are arranged in Sonic Advance 2 means that it's really difficult to go back on yourself. Oh, no worries, Green Frog. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, I have no idea if watch time actually makes a difference on Twitch, but feel free to leave it on either way. I'll leave it, but thanks so much for coming along and joining the chat. Hope you had fun. Yeah, now we get a really cool fight, well, race, with Metal Sonic. Always one of my favourite things in Sonic games. Even in Sonic 4 Episode 2, which everyone hates, I liked it. Oh no, I'm going the wrong way. At least it's not really a race this time. It's more just like going to the top of this tower. And this is one of the few uses of 3D Sonic Mania as well. With the way the tower was rotating it. Which looks really cool. Are we going to get another... Another remix of the uh, Sonic 2 boss? Not quite. What a stupid... What a stupid thing. Why would he put himself there if he knows that the bullets will just float up to the top of the stage and attack him? <laughs> ah, I was wondering if that would work. If that technique would work. Maybe not. I'm gonna wait until it and tell him to come But luckily he just stands in the corner, so no problem there. That's pretty funny. Give Sonic Mania another chance. Did you give up on Sonic Mania? At some point? It's such a well made game. It just feels really fun to play. Oh, I was being a bit eager then. Ah, I scared them. That was pretty good, I got in a lot of, a lot of attacks there. Okay. I've run out of rings. No, I can't cheese it. Nice little bit of 3D there as well. It kind of reminds me of Sonic Rush. Oh, I would love to play Sonic Rush on stream as well. I've actually got a capture card for my for my 3DS, so I could actually do that using the original system. This is basically like the boss of the Sonic Knuckles. Phew, that was lucky. I just lost my life. Right the only time I use the spin bash is when I'm waiting for the thing to come back. The drop bash. There we go. I can't, remember. I can't remember the order of the levels in this game at all, to be honest. Here we go. Hydro, I'm not going to make the joke. You can let me know how it's pronounced. Although it is now official since you Tanaka made that tweet. I wonder how they picked which levels to include. fan favourites maybe, or the ones that Sega thought would be the most recognisable levels, or maybe maybe they were Christian Whitehead's favourite stages, 
It'd be interesting to know how they push these ones. Because I think, I think for the most part, um, they made some really good choices. Wow, I haven't heard that sound effect in a while. Oh, this bit's a bit boring, you just have to stay on this boat. Oh, that was pretty short. I'm sure there's a longer bit later on. And obviously in, in Sonic Rush there's a really annoying auto-scrolling section as well. Oh, okay. That must be for when the, when the water's up here. Oh, there it is. Okay. What am I supposed to do there? Probably not right. Go in the bubble? Oh, cool. I don't remember this. That's a cool little bonus. That was definitely not in the original version of this stage. Well, this boat wasn't either. That's what I like. They took the original themes and then they added to them with things that make sense in that setting. Okay, fine, I'll take the air bubble. Oh, I knew that would come down and squash me. And another awesome remix of the, the music on this level as well. I'm glad I've got Twitch to make me talk, else when I play these games on my own, I'm literally just humming the music or just singing along the entire time. Although, if I play Sonic R, you know I won't be able to not sing well. Every single song in that game is just an absolute classic. In the cheesiest, nineties way possible. But Richard Jacks did actually prove that he could do other styles of music as well when he did the music in Metropolis Street Racer. And he also did a song for Sonic 06 actually, which actually does have a really good soundtrack. Even if the game's a bit broken. I do unironically want to play Sonic 06 again. To see if I am... See if I do think it's a bad game, because when I first played it, I actually did enjoy it. I knew it was bad, like I knew it was broken. I still enjoyed it, and I want to know whether I still will, even though I, you know, obviously understand games a lot better now, and like, what's good and bad. Yeah, it'd be really interesting to see how I think about the game today. What, why was that? That bubble was weird. Oh god, I suddenly gone that way. Let's try that again. No, I can't skip. Yay, Michael, I know a t-shirt's on the way. I ordered a t-shirt from the public right for another video, and it's just been dispatched. There's some really nice fan art on public. I had to look on Redbubble as well and stuff like that, but there wasn't really anything I liked on there. I found a really nice one. Oh yeah, this bit's cool. You basically get to do what um, what Eggman did to you in, in Sonic 3. Hm. 
and then obviously you have to stop in time so that his bombs don't hit you. But yeah, what a, what a fun idea for a boss. An easy idea, but a cool idea. I think the bosses in this game, even though they're easy, are probably one of my favourite things about it as well. This time. Oh, I thought there'd be a hand there. It's been a while. Well, I think I haven't actually played Sonic Mania since it came out, really, so I don't really remember the difference between the zones. Ah, oh, this music. Oh yeah, I was talking about my Game Composers episode earlier. One of the other people that I included on it was John Snow as well. Obviously the, the composer for a lot of the Sonic games. Uh, one of the tracks I shared was... The Metropolis level in Sonic Heroes. I can't remember what that stage is actually called, but I shared that one. And the other one was... Mission Street from Sonic Adventure 2. One of Tails' levels that I really like. So he's just great all round. Although he was brought in to remix the prototype music in this to replace the Michael Jackson songs, and people think he did a bad job of it because he doesn't know how to use the Mega Drive sound chip properly, apparently. Because people don't like his work on Sonic 4. I like the music in Sonic 4 though. Okay, there. Okay. There's a box in there taunting me. There isn't really anything that different about this stage end compared to Act 1. Apart from there's these long pipes everywhere. Yeah, finally remembered I've got that drop dash. Oh, there's another one anyway. Doesn't matter that the other one was torn to me. Mm. I kind of want to play Freedom Planet again as well. So it's obviously very similar to this modern style Sonic game. And I think Freedom Planet 2 is out now. Or it was coming out soon at some point. I really enjoyed playing the first one, I've got it on the Wii U. There's the hand. Why not just put one of the boosters back there? I guess it just makes uh, something a little bit more unique at this stage. There's so many different paths that I feel I'm just completely ignoring by just running through these stages. I've missed a lot of special stages too. Oh no! An underwater auto scroller. So the idea here is to dodge all of the obstacles and then hit those bombs and then try and line Eggman up to get hit by them. Again, another really inventive boss design that takes like a classic level and puts a new spin on it. I just love all the different ideas that they come up with. Somehow Sonic's not running out of breath though. Although Tails is. Oh, I thought I would get stabbed by the level then. Okay, Tails is about to die. Oh no! Ah, uh, Tails, if you could have held your breath for one more second. This one, this section's basically the same as Sonic 3. Watch out for the well uh, Alright, 
it's easier just to keep jumping. And there we go. Even with me chasing him like that. There we go. And, and I've run out of cider. I can't remember how many levels are in this. Let's see whether I think I'll be able to complete it in half an hour. So that was Hydro City. There's only three more. Two more? Am I looking at it in the right order? This is another new one. Let's just pause it for a second, see where we're up to. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe if I train speedrun it. Maybe not. Maybe I'll leave the rest of the stages to do next time as well, because I'm kind of getting a bit tired now. I've been streaming for three hours. So we'll probably do this one and then call it a night. And then we can pick up Sonic Mania next Thursday. I'm glad I decided to play it again though, because I'm having a great time going through it. Hopefully you're enjoying watching, or just enjoying having some entertaining background noise. While you're working on whatever you're doing, or just chilling out. Yeah, it's been a long stream. An angry long stream. Yeah, I thought I would basically be done with um, Sonic and Knuckles by now, but I finished it way earlier than I thought I would. I'll get through Maroon Salage. Ma Maroon Salage? Saloon Mirage. Man, I'm tired, I get my words mixed up. It is very hot in the UK, and it's only going to get hotter. Next week's going to be unbearable. Look at Eggman in his little steam train outfit. Whoa, there's a preview of the level we're about to go through. What a cool stage. Ooh, what a special stage. I'm tempted to put my aircon back on, but I know it's going to be too late. Maybe I'll do a midweek stream to play Sonic R. I really want to play Sonic R now. The last time I saw anyone stream Sonic R was when Pete Gore was trying to speed on it. It's a shame that he's in America so I can never catch his streams because they're always on while well, I'm asleep overnight. I used to really love his YouTube videos. He was a big influence so he created my channel. Oh no, you can fall out this stage. Damn. I've only got three emeralds left though. I probably could do it if there's six stages. But I don't think you get another chance. No. Oh well, anyway. Speed run time. So I wanna go and relax for a bit before bed. Continue reading a book that I'm reading on my iPad a bit. Tails has managed to get some flying goggles. 
Ace since last time. I saw on Twitter you got the AC unit. Yeah, AC is not common in the UK at all, but I think it's becoming more common. Like, we went shopping earlier and they were actually selling, uh, you know, portable AC units like what we got in the supermarket now. Oh no! I think you might be able to see it if I move the microphone out of the way. It's, uh, it's bigger than it looks and it's really heavy too. I don't, apparently in America you have them like already built into the, the windows or something. Well, I don't really think that's an option here. But yeah, we've never really had AC at all. Well, in, in shops and offices and stuff, obviously we do, but... At least no one I know has ever had, like, household air conditioning. But it is definitely needed. Especially... I know people love to complain about it, but the summer here, it just feels so much worse than, like, summer abroad. Because, uh, yeah, on holiday, if I'm in a country and it's like 30, 32, whatever, it feels really nice, but here you just feel like you just can't breathe and you don't, don't want to do anything. It's horrible. And there's no escape because nowhere has any AC either. And yeah, all the houses are designed to keep the heat in. But I was saying earlier that I wonder if um, new builds will start building AC into the houses and stuff. Yeah, most apartments in the US have been built in. Hopefully that will become the case in the UK soon as well. I don't really know why it wasn't already. Would make sense. I guess a lot of the older houses in the UK were made before air conditioning was invented. So they didn't really consider it and then that's just what builders have stuck to over the years. Whereas, uh, I guess, in general, America's a lot more modern. So you kind of get, you get newer things like that ahead of us. Or they, they're quicker to take on, to catch on. Maybe. I'm just trying to think of reasons why we don't have it, to be honest. Hey, it's been a while since we saw a pinball level. Sonic Spinball was such a missed opportunity. I really don't like that game. It could have been so good. Why did they outsource it? Oh, That sounds like the jumping sound effect from Sonic CD. That anime. Oh yeah, you can time when you come out of those guns as well to send you to different parts of the stage. Again, another really unique level thing. Like, oh, I really wish they would make um, make their own custom game. Yeah, Pokemon Pinball's really fun. There was a Sega Pinball game for the GBA, which is really good too. Yeah, most of the houses in the UK are a lot older. Like, it's not uncommon to go anywhere in the UK and find houses that are older than the entire of America as it's known today. Like, there's still... There's still loads of tubes here 
zero houses. I don't know whether it was cold or bad. I know global warming's made a bit of a difference, but I don't know how much. But I do know they were generally made to keep heat in rather than to cool it down. Was that Act 1 or Act 2? That was Act 2, I think, wasn't it? If that was Act 2, then... I'm going to have to find someone to go and raid. Hopefully I'm following someone. Okay. Right, I'm going to leave that there until the next stream, which is going to be next Thursday. So, thank you everyone who joined, and thank you everyone who came over on the raid and actually stuck with us. I really appreciate that, and thank you for all the follows as well. It's really going to help a lot. Now, bear with me one second. I'm going to put my PC back on the monitor and figure out, figure out who can send you all to, uh, if I can remember how to do it. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I thought I was logged into Twitch, but I wasn't, so bear with me one second. Let's see if we can figure this out. Uh, where do I have to go? I'm still learning my way around Stream Manager. Uh, raid channel. Hey, pass the plungers live again. Should we send people back over to him? All right. Yep, thanks for joining. I'm going to send you over to my friend Pass the Plunger for this one. All right. See ya. In 10 seconds. Let's see how excited he is. Okay, I have to press the raid now button, but I'm going to make sure I've got his stream up so I can hear. Um, well, that's in the drawer with some other bits and pieces I've got. Oh yeah, and the power glove is like a new thing. It's actually, it's not working, the power glove, but I was giving it... Okay. Power We're going over. Bye, guys. Boy, I need to get fixed, but I've always wanted one of them. It's a stuff I've said, and you've got the Panasonic Q there as well, Japanese one. 